Okay, I am recording. Okay. Okay, so I'm Sylvia Dana, and I'm in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and this is our Go-Getter Book Club, and this is our fourth book. I was just telling Jeff, the first one we did, starting in the summertime, actually, was um, Power of Consistency by Weldon Long, and then we did Success Faster from Julie Nelson with EXP, and then we did Think and Grow Rich, and now we're doing this book, Seven Levels of Communication. And um, Julie Younger, am I saying your last name right? I always not, I'm never sure. It's, it's, right, right. it's just Younger without the O. Younger without the O. So yeah. when, you know, she joined us for our last book club, Think of a Rich, and she had been talking about reading the book Miracle Morning and how it was just really life changing for her. And so, you know, some people have mentioned this book before, and I've read it um, before. And so I just was feeling like this was the book we should do next. And um, I asked Julie if she would help lead it. And she's like, well, I haven't even read that book. And I'm like, I think you're going to like it because it's related to Miracle Morning. And, I, you know, so, so anyway, so <laughs> that's how this all started. So here we are. Um, now, a couple of things. We're... Um, you're, I didn't like automatically mute you all. So if you, if you're not, if, if you're going to be busy cl doing dishes or cleaning or whatever, could you please mute yourself? Um, and then if you, this is like a mastermind. So it's not like people presenting. We're going to just go through the discussion points. Now, some of you might not have read this book ever. You might not even know what's going on yet. And that's perfectly fine. This is a mastermind book talk. We are going to kind of start um, delving into the first three chapters and concepts, but even if you haven't read it yet, it's okay because you'll get, you'll get something from it. And then when you do go read the book, it'll all make more sense anyway. So it's either way, it's all good. Okay. <laughs> Sound good, Julie? That sounds great. Okay, good. So, so we'll go, we'll go ahead and start. So, um, so seven levels of communication. Julie, go ahead and, and take it over. Basically what I did, Julie, I took all your notes that you gave me and I put them in order in these slides. So it's all you, babe. What? Okay. Um, <laughs> ego era and to the generosity generation. Um, <laughs> She's like, I looked at my notes. What did I say? <laughs> So he was talking, he was talking in the first chapter about moving from the ego era to the generosity generation, like, you know, the age of referrals. So that's, that's all you wrote for, so. Okay. So Julie, why don't you do this? Why don't you start out by saying what, what you read in Miracle Morning and how you're feeling that this relates and what did Miracle Morning do for you? And what are you liking about this book? So just start there, and then we'll just start the conversation from there. Okay. Um, the Miracle Morning, actually, I mean, I've been a real estate agent for 13 years, um, but um, was kind of doing multiple things and not really focusing on real estate. So when, um, when I read The Miracle Morning, it really transformed how I – how I do business now. I, um, uh, you know, I get up in the morning at four thirty-five o'clock. I, I journal, I read, um, and it, it really structured me and how, um, motivated, um, it, it has made me. I, the miracle morning, it, it just really, um, yeah, I think it's, structure is really what um i got out of that book and then and the story that was you know about a real estate agent who was kind of you know um down and and down and out about the market and and his, you know and his physical self and um and actually took his wife who was a a um a mortgage lender to kind of Steer them in the right direction, anyways. Um, so then, this seven levels of communication um, it was kind of cool because it, it, it basically is the same. It's the same guy. It's the same story, um, but a little way more in depth um, and talking about the 
the points um, that you go through, um, you know, getting a coach and, and all that stuff. So, um, uh, yeah, Sylvia, help. <laughs> No, that's good. No, that's good. No, yeah. So what's cool about this story is, um, yeah, so this is like the, the prequel. <laughs> the prequel yeah. is when Rick and Michelle first meet. So it's, I like it because it's like, it's, it's a love story. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely is. It's a real estate love story. Okay. <laughs> so, so anyway, so what we're going to do is just kind of go through, we're not going to sit here and like regurgitate the book. We're going to go through some of the concepts we're going to pull out from from the book. And so um, let's, let's uh, start here. I, Jeff was just saying that this book club was good timing for him because he just got done listening to it like for a second time in a row recently. And now he's just getting ready to get the paperback. So Jeff, are you here? I'm here. So can you tell us a little bit, so what is it you were like excited about this book club and you were, because you even posted like, wow, this book, yay. You know, <laughs> so what is it, why you, what, what, what are you getting out of this book so far? Well, I, uh, quick little background, I guess, for me, because um, I, I'm in Michigan, I'm in the middle of Michigan in between two semi-large markets, but I don't work those markets. Um, there's you know, it tends to be kind of a vacuum type place where if you don't meet people or if you don't read and, and get outside of your own market, um, you're, you're, you, well, you're left on an island, so to speak. Anyway, uh, several years ago, I um, realized really? how nice referrals were <laughs> and how, how it can transform your business into, you know, constantly pouring money into meeting strangers um, right. versus referrals. Well, you know, so here I am standing there for a couple of years saying, gosh, how do I do this? How do I really ramp up the referral business? And eventually um, came to actually the Miracle Morning um, also oh. is, is really where I started with Michael Mayer and his stuff. Yeah. Um, and so it was a, not just a how-to kind of, it was much more than a how-to. It's, it's a mindset and, and it's so organic Mm -hmm. that that um i mean it's about being a good person to and taking care of the people that are around you and and the people that you want to spend more time it it just seems so natural and 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 just kind of human based uh it just drew me in so the first time i listened to um 7l was kind of just um you know in the car when i had time i didn't put a lot of focus in it but every time i was in the car i picked up something that like, wow, that's genius, or that makes complete sense. So the second time around was really, you know, with the intent of taking some notes. And, and then I realized my notes, separate from a physical copy of the book, um, are, are not as effective. So anyway, I, really, this the content that he presents is, it's almost too easy. It almost right. makes way too much sense. So it really, that's what has pulled me in. And, and I feel like it's a book that you could probably just keep reading and keep studying. And that's why this this book club is so awesome because now I can talk about you know bouncy ideas off each other. Right. Exactly, that's fantastic. Well, thank you. Okay, cool. So, so last for Think and Grow Rich, um, we were talking about the Do It Now bracelet um, <clears throat> that uh, you know Julie was talking about from Miracle Morning, and it's in this book too. And then I actually made a sheet, and I will. After this, I will make sure it's posted in our workplace group, but it's a sheet where you check off and there's actually a video too, where Mike talking about it, where you check, check off, do it now, do it now, do it now, where you have to like get it in your brain. Cause you're like training your subconscious mind to stop procrastinating and start just taking action. And so, so anyway, you check off 49 times, <laughs> three times a day. Um, do it now do it now so anyway that sheets in there but in in the book they use a, a bracelet so anyway do you want to talk a little bit about that julie because that's your thing do it now <laughs> do it now yeah i mean um gosh i for me i always tend to go to the things that are easy you know quick quick and easy stuff, stuff that's natural so so for me i'm learning this crm that um the kv core 
And, and I have to actually say, yesterday I created a squeeze page. Good job. I'm pretty excited about that because it took me a while to figure it out, but watching videos and, and all, and I did that. But um, just putting my sphere in, my, my do it now procrastination is really, is my, is maybe core. I, it's such a, excuse me, it's such a powerful tool that I, I want to make sure that I understand, you know, get it all down and understand it. And I have, the other day I wrote down just out of my text messages recently, I have 78 names I need to add into my CRM. And that's just from my text, not, not, a, not including my email or, you know, my phone um, contacts or whatever. So I have a lot of work to do and I tend to do everything but that. <laughs> So the do it now thing is a big deal to me. Um, <clears throat> so, but so, uh, so talk about in this in the book what he's talking about some of these affirmations. Let's talk about let's mastermind about that about the affirmations that Michael Mayer in this story starts talking about. Um, what do we need to what 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 stuck out to you, Julie? Well, um. You mean like this stuff, like, like saying, um, uh, like, give me, help me here. Give me so, uh, just following your notes, you wrote down procrastination, elimination, beginning with the end of mind. Talk about that. Why did you write that down? What is it that we're... I think it's more like, um, <clears throat> like, what do you want written on your tombstone? And I think Jeff kind of hit on it. It's, it's a... Uh, it's about being real. It's about being a people person and connecting with people. It's, it's not about them. It, it shouldn't really be about how much money can I make? It's for me, it's, it's how many relationships and lives can I change by, you know, helping them. And, um, you know, so it's like, what do you want written on your tombstone? What, what do you, um, you know, start with the end in mind, you know, um, the very end. <laughs> the very end, yeah. You know, what do you, what do you want people to say about you uh, in your eulogy? You know, right. it's not, you know, oh, Julie, you know, made a million dollars in 2019. No, I, I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't want someone to say that about me at my eulogy. I mean, right. um, so that's kind of... <laughs> Julie was really good at making KV core squeeze pages. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> um, it's, uh, I have written down here, the, the most important conversation is the one you have with yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, who, who, who are you? Are you, you know, are you a good person? Do you, do you do things to help others and not just help yourself? You know, mm -hmm. um, I got that out of this book. Um, so in Power of Consistency, if some of you haven't ever read that before, I highly recommend it. It's um, by Weldon Long. And he, I'll give you the quick story. He was in prison for most of his 20s and 30s in three different stints for basically being a thief. And he had, uh, in, um, I can't remember what year, but he was, he had like, he was in his last seven year stint of, of being in prison. And by the time he was going to get out, he was going to be 39 years old. And during that time, his dad died. And that was why he was in prison. And this was very difficult on him. <clears throat> and um, he started reading and he read um, Ralph Waldo Emerson, a man is what he thinks about or a man is who he thinks about all day long or a man is what he thinks about all day long you know so whatever a man thinks that's what he is and he's like is that really true can you just think about who you are and then that's who you are and so he started this his dad dying was this turning point 
And so I started reading Tony Robbins and Stephen Covey and, um, you know, Jim Rohn and Brian Tracy and just started changing his mindset every day and started developing a prosperity plan through affirmations of who he was. Like, I'm a man of character. He had a three-year-old son that he didn't even know where he was because the kid was in foster care because the mom was in prison too, you know? So, so he's like, I'm a good father to my son. You know, he just started seeing this every day and he he really actually changed and so by the time he got out of prison it was still hard because then he was in a halfway house and he had to get a job and he was like a three-time felon you know so it was really difficult so it's his story but it's all about how he changed his mind and used his reticular activating system through affirmations to change who he was and, um, and it, you know, we all know this, if you've ever, but if you've been in sales at all, it's like, you've heard this before, it's not new, but just the way it's, he's just such a down to earth guy. And I love the audio version of it. Cause it's him tell, speaking, you know, him telling a story. It's, it's just very powerful, especially like the very last chapter he's telling a story about how he got his job after the halfway house and it's just like you're like crying you know <laughs> because it's just all about how he changes his mindset but he still has to persevere through it to to actually achieve you know it, it, anyway but you know it's funny when you said um you know um the most important conversation is the one you have with yourself. I think I, I might've even mentioned this last, last book club, but I used to say, you know, when things were hard or I was having a bad day, I'd say to myself, like, it hurts to be me. <laughs> it hurts to be me right now, you know, but through mindset training, I stopped saying that. It's like, it's good to me, be me. Like, I'm fantastic and I've got this, you know, and it's going to be fine. I just need to take a little nap, <laughs> you know, uh, so, so anyway, so moving right along, um, leaving a legacy uh, and, and st speaking good things to yourself. So what's next, Julie? Uh, so what are, what's, uh, oh, the lighthouse. Yeah. So, so <clears throat> I have written down here, a lighthouse is most necessary in a storm. We look for a lighthouse when we need guidance and direction. So... It, I, I take that as, as um, being like a beacon, like um, I'm here to help, you know, I'm, I, you know, we are a wealth of knowledge um, when it comes to our industry and um, the people, a lot of times the people that we help, um, you know, they're not professionals in our industry. So being a um, um, kind of a lighthouse for people to come and ask you questions and not feel intimidated, you know, by maybe asking them. So a lighthouse is, is kind of a good analogy because um, everyone in a storm will go towards that lighthouse. So be that, be that um, person where people will want to come to you and, and ask you, you know, how to, you know, how to help. Mm -hmm. So, um, I have fear is a powerful motivator. Fear sells ads. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not really sure why I wrote that one down. You know uh, well, it's just, you know, because, because when we, you know, when you are advertising maybe one way to look at is when you are advertising it's like no one can help you but me so yeah. <laughs> you know uh but but um it's just it, i don't know why you wrote it either but maybe you'll come up with it can uh, i can i do you mind if i chime in on that exactly. and the fear thing um because i fear is interesting it's a it can be a motive i think the point of that is is that uh fear is what you see on TV. Fear is what makes people um, usually react, but it's typically not in the positive direction when you're talking about internally fear. Well, you've seen it lately. Fear is a liar. You know, it makes you believe things that you shouldn't believe. But um, I also believe that when you operate um, under fear, you, um, 
you're coming from a position of scarcity right as opposed to looking at it from abundance. a position of abundance right I, and i that's fear is very very powerful that way and i think i think that's what he's yeah getting at yeah cool. thank you and then um the things that no one can take away is um your knowledge your relationships your family your love for others your health your faith and your happiness i mean those are things that that are yours, that you, you possess those, you own those. No one can take those away from you. And he, you know, in the book, he, he's um, figuring that out. Um, you know, right. um, and along the way in the book, I love his um, competitor, the Don, the, the guy that, you know, has the big billboard up, you know. With his spray tan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. I mean, I love that. Yeah. Um, so, so before we move on, does anybody else have any, has, does anybody else want to speak up about anything we've talked about so far? I probably muted you, so you'll have to unmute yourself if you do. Can, so I haven't seen the printed book, so I'm very curious. Is it Don or is it Michael Mayer's accent, Don? That's oh. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm done. pretty sure it's Don, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, is yeah. Julie, you have the hard copy. Is it Don D O N? Yeah, yeah. I actually I have the Kindle version. It is D O N. In the okay. Kindle. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Every time he's like, "Hey, Don," and I'm like, "Hey, Don," you know, because I'm from Michigan, so Don, <laughs> Don. <laughs> okay. Um, Although you know. Port, you know, you're in Portland, Julie. I lived in Boise, Idaho for 10 years, and I started to lose that really hard, you know, weird yeah. O that I got going on. Ah. Um, <laughs> and I started saying it more like, done. <laughs> uh, you know, but now my Michigan accent's fully back. But anyway, okay. So let's talk about this fun stuff, all about 150 people in your database. Oh, yeah, this was cool. Okay. This fascinated me, and uh, I mean, um, okay, so so I believe he was, um, Rick was at the seminar, and, um, or the, you know, presentation there that, uh, that he was invited to, and um, so he, so 150 people uh, in your database, that's what they're, they kind of started off with as far as um, everybody knows 150 people somehow they you know you know 150 people if you have that in your database um, they move the statistics show that that um, they move every five years so that's like 30 people if you take one-fifth of your database 30 people in your database move every five years and those, if those, I have here, if those people sold and bought, sold and bought, that would be 60 people a year. Mm -hmm. um, so, so then he goes on and 250 people, um, on an, um, people at an average wedding. Okay. And mm -hmm. every one, you know, is connected to 150 people. That's 150 times 150 making it 22,500 people in your community. Mm -hmm. So if you take 20% of your community is uh, moving, that's 4,500 people. Um, and then if you multiply that to buying and selling, that's 9,000 transactions with a database of 150 people. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's, it's true. It's, it's absolutely true. Um, you know, so we're talking about KV core and squeeze pages and trying to reach out to strangers, which I think we need to do that too. Um, yeah. but, but because everyone thing is online. Um, but, um, it's, but it's, your, it's, so, it's your people. It's your, it's your, it's your tribe. Influence. Your tribe. Yeah. It's, people that already know and trust you. Maybe you just haven't um, communicated, you know, exactly what you do. And 
that's what I'm trying to do right now. Like I said, I've been a real estate agent for 13 years, but actually, because I'm a general contractor as well, I kind of, I, people didn't know that I that I was a real estate agent. So now my focus with social media is just trying to educate people that I am knowledgeable in this business. Um, I know, um, you know, how to sell homes or, you know, how to walk someone through a home inspection or, you know, maybe an appraisal that is, you know, low. And, you know, I, I mean, I have experienced that stuff. So it's me educating um my sphere that you can trust me I, I I know what I'm doing <laughs> so um so then so the next slide that you have up is um Janice um who was uh presented up at um this seminar that he was at um and uh she um actually was focusing on first-time home buyers, which kind of hits home because I am actually a part of a first-time home buyers panel um, here. And um, she, she basically took her focus to an apart one apartment complex that had rents around the same dollar as, uh, you know, buying a single family home. And nice. so she actually, um, got the mailer for that um, complex and she hand wrote the notes um, she hand wrote 350 people um, you know uh, a little note about um, buying and she uh, was in contact with 77 people responded to her 350 note because she hand wrote them she she um, she, she wrote their name on the address, so it wasn't a label, you know, she uh, used a real stamp, not a meter, metered stamp. Um, those things are, are, are a big deal, um, but it, it produced uh, quite a bit for her. So I thought that was kind of encouraging. Mm -hmm. And then Michelle, um, the lender here, well, does anyone want to comment on any of that? Does anyone have experience from what Janice had done or anyone sent out handwritten notes and gotten some good uh, feedback from that? Yeah, you have to unmute yourself if anybody wants to speak up. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Um, I've gotten a couple expireds by handwritten notes. Um, oh, nice. Sometimes I'll, I'll do the expireds um, in our area and I ended up getting one that was interviewed by three other agents and uh, it worked out that you know I ended up getting the house and got it sold. That's awesome. What kind? Of, what did? What? What kind? Of, can I ask what kind of note you wrote? Because um, I've never done that. I would. I actually would actually try and do that. Well, you know, I look. I have a hard time writing, so I look at what's online. You know, some of the postcards and stuff, and sometimes I'll look at what they're writing in there. But basically letting them know that, you know, I have experience in um, expires and to give me a chance or give me a 30-day trial, um, that will get you the confidence with the client and also the trust with the client. And they may extend it depending on how you market the property and, and how things are going in the marketplace. I like awesome. that. I like that too. Mm -hmm. Sandy, really quick, where are you from? I'm from Dallas. Texas. Nice to meet you. <laughs> okay, what's what's okay. next? What's next? Michelle, the lender. This one was really cool, and I actually went to a housewarming uh, party, housewarming office warming party for a mortgage lender last night. Um, I was kind of got a late start, so it was towards the end. But I ended up um, chatting with um, the lender that uh, that. Um, invited me and I actually shared this with him and he really liked this idea. Um, what Michelle um, did as a lender was, um, and, and, and she actually um, figured this out through a little bit of trial and error, but she um, uh, has a housewarming party for her clients who um, before closing, when she um, come or when she initially, you know, does the loan application and everything, she basically goes through her, her, um, uh, routine, um, 
of what she does with her um, transactions. And one of those was at the end is having a house warming party. So she's preparing her clients to let them know that this is part of her package. So um, it's not um, like all of a sudden thrown on them at closing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but she caters um, the a party at their house uh, after they close the transaction, and they and and then she actually gets a list of the people that the homeowners, uh, new homeowners, would like to invite, and then she actually calls them and personally invites them to this housewarming um, party, um, and and. They also had door, have door prizes there to where they have to, you know, put their contact information down in order to win uh, a door prize, which is awesome because in my first time home buyers uh, thing I'm, I do, I have, see, I have a, this is just a one third of the names that we got when we did the bridal show this last uh, month. Uh, we had a booth at a bridal show and we gave away a hundred dollar gift. A certificate to um, Bed Bath and Beyond, and people had to put their names down with their emails um, and uh, and their phone number, and if they were going to buy or sell, um, or not sell, but buy if they're going to be buying a house because they're you know brand new um, newlyweds, mm -hmm. and so I have this huge my uh, other panel of people that I have a, a um, lender and a um, uh, insurance agent that I do this with. And so we each kind of split up, we're going to put them in a spreadsheet and we're going to um, start marketing to these people. That's awesome. Yeah. So Plus we get the list for the, 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 the um, oh. all the registries, but. Jeff had a question. Did in the book, did, did they, did she say, it was there a set number of amount of people that she would invite to these parties or just. I don't. Uh, I don't recall that she did say she had a number. I do know she said it cost her two to, I wrote down two to $300 for food is what yeah. she was, what it cost her. Um, and that she would, that she would get three to four referrals at each party. Mm -hmm. So it, it pay, you know, it's paying off for her. Um, and so I would, you know, that we have a, I, I, we, I remember when I first got this book, and I think it was probably my first year as a realtor. I've only been a realtor since November of 2016, but I, I've always had this housewarming idea, but I just can never pull it off. But I now have a lender that wants to do these. He brought it up. So he, he's done these before or wants to do them anyway. Yeah. Um, he's like, I've got $150 a month I can spend, you know, um, to do this. So so I, w I would like to start doing them. So my idea is not only, get, you know, get the, who, you know, who are your friends and family that you want to invite over to your house, but also to knock on the doors of the 10 people on each side of the house on the same side of the street and then 20 people across the street to invite the neighbors to, um, because they want to meet their neighbors, so right? Um, so, so anyway, I totally want to do this. And um, <laughs> I sold Mary Kay for eight years. And this is, you know, it's exactly Mary Kay. Like, here, what's your, who's your guest list? I'm going to call them and confirm them. I mean, I can do this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so in, in talking to Matt last night, um, uh, the lender that I was at the, his, their big um, office party, um, uh -huh. housewarming party, and I was explaining this to him, and he actually mentioned what you just said about going and knocking on the doors of the neighbors. Mm -hmm. He's actually going to hold a class next month um, in March um, on door knocking. Nice. And, oh my gosh, it's not my it's not my thing. It's absolutely out of my comfort zone. <laughs> However, that the miracle morning and this um, the seven levels here are getting me out of my comfort zone. And I told him that I would actually. I go to your class and I actually, well, he wants to go it, knock on doors in a neighborhood with me. Um, awesome. And, and, you know, you get up like an open house or you basically get a reason why you're knocking on their door. But he took it a little further and he, he actually shared an example with me that I'll, that I'll share. But he, he actually um, uh, says, you know, it, it might cost you $250 but you basically let these neighbors know that you're going to be holding a, um, like for instance, uh, a, um, 
a shredded, uh, you know, um, booth or, or, you know, like a, you put up a tent and you bring in a dumpster um, or shred it or your garbage or, you know, stuff, you know, clean out your house kind of thing. And you can bring it to, to, you know, where they set up and um, you have a booth and you have, you know, your information um, and you just talk to neighbors and get them out and, and, and come and socialize. I guess he's had success with that. That's interesting. Um, I like that. Yeah, that's kind of different, huh? It really um, is. I like it. Yeah, he said that he went with a, a, an agent um, a while back. Uh, she was apparently new in the business. And so her principal broker, you know, was kind of asking him, hey, take this gal out door knocking. So Matt said that he gathered up 40, um, you know, information on 40 different homes. So they were going to knock on 40 doors mm -hmm. and the first door they went to, the guy was like, I'm not interested and slammed the door in their face. And then the little brand new agent looked at him and said, I cannot do this. <laughs> he goes, we'll be fine. We got 39 more. Right. And they, um, she ended up getting two listings out of it. It's amazing. And, um, yeah. So it, it, it was a huge success story for them. I want that lender to be my friend. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, you know, a funny thing is about this, um, this lender, I actually have done one transaction with him a year and a half ago. And then it was the first time I had met him because he was my client's lender, not, not from me. And, um, this, this guy, he kept, you know, reaching out to me. I want to meet you. I want to have coffee with you, you know, after the transaction was done. And I kept putting him off and putting him off because I was doing construction and, and I really I didn't feel like I had anything to offer him. Mm -hmm. So I was avoiding him. But mm -hmm. then after I was like January one, I'm full fledged into this real estate. And I, and, and so I, I actually announced that I'm with EXP, you know, now. And, um, he actually sent me an email and said, ha ha, I found you. <laughs> it was kind of funny. And anyway, yeah. I did end up meeting with him for coffee and, and he did, um, I did say, you know, I didn't meet with you because I didn't feel like I had anything to offer you and I didn't want to waste your time. Mm -hmm. And, and now that I'm, you know, focused, I, I do want to partner up with you and stuff. So anyway, cool. Um, Jeremy, the landscaper, this one was a little out there for me. I, I, this one was a little, um, uh, so how this guy, how this guy, um, actually became, very successful was by a handwritten note that he um, actually um, he had a coach, didn't he, Sylvia? Uh, yeah. That he that he um, got some advice on how to write a a, a note to a, a follow up note to a guy that he met at a at a gathering, um, and he happened to be a um, a, a grounds as the golf course grounds consultant that he wrote this note to um and um ended up setting up a, uh, arranged and had a meeting with this guy um but he set up a tea time um at a golf course so so they you know with his grandson because apparently the guy was talking about his grandson being great at golf or whatever so he set up this this landscaper guy jeremy set up a a tea time with the three of them at a really nice golf course, um, and um, they he he actually arranged for a limo, so he spent two he grand spent money in a rain. He he got a limo. This is where it's kind of out there for me. He got a limo to pick up the grounds, the the consultant and his grandson, <coughs> and, and took them to the golf course where they they you know ended up playing golf. Um, but they had a really good time. And I guess it, um, it, um, it cost them about $2,000, you know, to, you know, for the round of golf and probably for lunch and, and um, the limo. But he followed back up with another handwritten note thanking them both. Um, and about two weeks later, he gets um, a call that um, 10 golf courses needed um needed a landscaping architecture mm -hmm. so that's like a place for one, one million dollars in business uh he got out of that two thousand he spent 
um, and uh, yeah. So that's what I liked about the, the part I did like about his story is that um, he he was his dad was a landscaper. And, you know, always put food on the table and took care of the family and his business took care of that. And so what his dad, when he took over the business, his dad's like, why are you getting a coach? Like, you already know what to do. What's the problem? He's like, I, you know, I don't want to just put food on the table. I want to retire <laughs> from this, you know, like he, you know, so he, he, yeah. he paid, put in some money, put some skin in the game, some money to level himself up from where his dad was, you know, so that, I, I, that was interesting, but anyway, okay. Yeah, which I, I mean, really, it takes money to make money. I mean, I know everybody's probably heard that. It really does. I mean, even if it's just a little bit, you know, you know, it, it does, it does take money to make even, money. Even buying somebody, you know, like even setting up like a day where I'm networking with people and I'm buying somebody lunch and then buying coffees after that, I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but yeah anyway yeah I, I mean I since I've been going full-fledged into this I've either been drinking a lot of coffee or drinking a lot of wine or beer it's like my husband and I are going and we're we're going to meet a couple that you know we are friends with but we're just gonna you know chit chat and you know over a beer or whatever and I told my you know, it's like I'm gonna become an alcoholic or fat I mean yeah <laughs> Welcome to real estate. <laughs> a lot of drinking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's so, next? Okay. This this is what I I've been thinking about a lot, is, and I've been hearing it a lot. I've been hearing it a lot when I listen to like my favorite thing in the cloud is i conversations. I just love. I'm kind of bummed that Hank isn't moderating it anymore, but um, but I I really like the questions that are asked there, and I. Fail forward is the thing that I keep hearing. Um, you you got to fail in order. All the good, successful people fail. It, you know, it's because they try. So um, here, failure at a higher level. Top top producers fail at a higher level. That's 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 what I'm learning. Is so, if you don't try it, you're not gonna you're not gonna succeed. So Jeff, Jeff, right here, Jeff is a, he, he, he uh, achieved icon agent a couple months ago. Um, and you, you've been in EXP one year, right, Jeff? That's correct. One year as of Wednesday this past, this week. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Thanks. And, and, and um, you, um, did, were you ever on the, have you been in the I conversations yet? Today. Oh, you are? Today? Yeah. Are today? Yeah. It's my favorite. We to watch you. Oh, I love <laughs> listening to you guys. Awesome. I'm looking awesome forward so to it. much. Cool. Okay, so everybody, what, what time is that? Is that um noon Eastern time? Yeah. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. After leadership meeting. Okay, good. I just want to make sure I mention that. So anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it is the best. It's my favorite class out of all of them because it's just real. It's yeah. real off-the-cuff questions, and we get to know what – um. What does it take? What does it take? And and you guys are real people, you know? You're real, Jeff. Let me poke. You're a real person. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yes, I am. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, the upward spiral of life. Uh, uh, um, life. Learn, implement, fail, and evaluate. That's, that's um, yeah, that, I think that's a great... Uh, um, whatever you call it thing there. A mantra, a, a maxim. It's a maxim. Maxim. Kind of a rule of life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I just wrote here, failure is a part of life, a uh, spiral staircase, right? Next time you fail, it will be at a higher level. Um, evaluate that failure, and you will find yourself on the next step in the upward spiral. Yeah, top producers fail faster. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So now you've, we've come to the um, pyramid here, which is what the book talks about. Um, so the communication pyramid, um, the seven levels of communication, bottom level, the advertising to the top level and one-on-one -on -one meetings. So I have here written that um, 
as you go up the pyramid, you have more impact on the other person and relationships grow stronger. So as you can see, the purple um, and, and you know, advertising, direct mail, electronic communication, that's just in the information zone. That's not really um, very personable, you know, that's just kind of touching. Um, and then the upper three levels are the influential zone where you're, um, you know, you're actually talking to them, phone calls, you're meeting them at events and seminars, and then you're maybe on a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them. Those are, those are huge, but it, sometimes it does take, you know, the bottom influ influential zone um, to make it to that top. Get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. And then this is chapter three. So those are the first two chapters. It's just so <laughs> a <much>. lot. <laughs> um, this is the chapter three, um, the blessings book, um, where, you know, affirmations plus five things you are grateful for every morning. So, um, I do, when I journal, I do write in there, um, um, the, uh, I write my goals, you know, and like what I'm committed to doing, but I actually have not implemented this, the affirmations. And I, mm -hmm. and I know that, um, you're supposed to like put them on your mirror, mirror, everywhere you are, you're supposed to like put them on your monitor and affirmations, five things that you're grateful for every morning. Um, I haven't actually implemented that part yet. You'll get there someday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so the Rainmaker's affirmation I wrote, each and every day, someone, somewhere in my city needs my services. And my job today is to find that person. Yeah. So I, um, funny thing is, is I volunteer once a month at a, a, a Women's of Worth luncheon uh, at, a, at a church here locally. And I've been doing it for a couple of years. It's just one Thursday, the third Thursday of the month. And it's these older gals that come and they, you know, they gather and they listen to a speaker and they, and I, I there's like, I don't know, 15, 20 tables. So there's a hostess at each table and I'm a hostess. So I go around and and my one table, I take care of six or eight gals and I, um, you know, serve them their lunch and, and fill their coffee and tea and all that. Um, and I'm just now starting to communicate about being, you know, a real estate agent or whatever um, in a little bit of the small talk that we do. And yesterday, the whole table asked for my card. <laughs> And one gal has a place at a beach, uh, at the beach that she's trying to sell. And of course, that's not my territory. So, I, but I'm going to be reaching out in this cloud to try and find somebody that might, you know, have um, knowledge over there. But it's just getting out in your community and being more vocal. So, yeah. All right. Okay, so, um, so part of the, when Rick got a coach, what he, uh, what his coach wanted him to write, it, he wanted him to figure out what he would want, um, you know, said at his funeral, including a client. So he had to work on. He had to write you know, it out. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I haven't done that either. <laughs> Maybe that'll be the second time I read the book. Right. But, um, and he talked about the perfect voicemail greeting. Um, and, and then of course, you know, do it now 49 times, uh, three times a day. So you say that, say, do it now 49 times. And you say that three times a day. <laughs> Wee. Yeah. So, so, I so the whole time. So we, you guys, we, we, we kind of pulled out a lot from those first three chapters. Um, we have 10 minutes left and I just want to find out, is there anybody else who would like to um, talk or bring up or ask a question or make a comment about anything we've talked about so far, whether you read the book or not yet? Yeah, please. Somebody chime in here. Kind of do it now. Do you, um, 
do you go over? Or did you say do it now? It's just do it now. I say those three words. So in the in the book, he talks about they have a little black bracelet. Yeah. That, that says do it now and they tap it. But yeah. then in a video, Michael Mayer, he he has like a sheet that he made and he you check off do it now. 49 times, three times a day. And I actually made a sheet and I actually put it in our, it's in our files group in, yeah. in our go-getter book club. So however, you know. Well, I think it's just to get your mind programmed to do it. You're telling your mind to do something. So you have to program yourself, do it now, do it now, do it now, do it now. And you know what you need to do. It's just, you need to tell yourself to do it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do it now because procrastination really is a, a killer of everything. <laughs> yeah um, grace is say oh um, uh, grace said I strike out so much more by coming up to bat more often so she was referring to failing forward to success and then oh, Angelina Romero asked um, do we put everyone we know into KB core um, Angelina, I, I will tell you that I, I don't personally, that's just me. I use KB core strictly for lead generating of new people. Um, and trying to develop relationships with new leads. And then, and then what I do just because then what I do is I take those people and I put them into my regular CRM that I, that I use is in for my sphere and all my network and even family members and I have them you know it's just it, the reason I do that is just because when I joined eXp I was already using that CRM it's realty juggler and it's just really cheap and does everything I want it to do um but I love KB Core for generating leads that's just what I do but there are some people that use KB Core for their entire CRM and are completely fine happy so I don't know that's who wants to do that I'm, I'm gonna use it for my everything. I'm going to put my, well, I don't know if I'm going to put my mom in there, but you know, I'm gonna, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, I'm, I'm going to put, because you never know when those people are, you know, if you're touching those people, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's, um, you know, going out and having coffee with maybe somebody that you, you know, I have a friend that's, you know, living in New Jersey, but she's from here and she's going to move back there in June. So she, she says, I'm going to help her. I want, she wants me to help her find a place. I, I, I mean, I, I've, I've known her for ever, but I'm going to put her in there because yeah. just, yeah. So how about you, Jeff? How do you use KB Core? I, um, I, I, Kind of same way as you, Sylvia. I primarily generate leads um, and get them in there. And I also use it as a, a an active buyer tool, um, set up okay. search yeah. alerts and everything. But, um, you know, funny enough, I guess if you are influencing enough with your lead generation, your people, your people you already know, are going to find their way um, in your CRM anyway um, right. on their own. Uh, if you're, you know, influencing or, or exposing your site to enough people ultimately they're going to fall within that category as well and and there are if if kb core is your only crm the only one then you absolutely put the people you know in there no question um right. but i don't know that it, it there are other options but if you don't want to take those options um kb core will definitely do what you need it to do right yeah definitely have all everybody in a crm somewhere <laughs> and then, and, and, and I don't care if it's an Excel spreadsheet, but, but have a, some, some sort of a database where you're keeping everybody and you're doing something with those people, touching them in, with an email or a note or a call now and then. Um, and so Angelina, to answer your question, what, what you know, the, the thing I always hear is whatever CRM you use is the one that's going to work. <laughs> whatever one works is the we're using so just pick one and if you want if you want to use kb core for everything do it again the only reason that i haven't completely transferred because i was already using real struggler and and i i don't you know so i did i just use both right now and maybe eventually i'll transfer them all into kb core i don't know but that's where i'm at okay 
Anybody else have anything to say? Um, comment on, ask a question. Has everybody read the book? You haven't, see you haven't yet? No, I'm, actually I read the first chapter. Good job. <laughs> but uh, I was looking for the hardback and then I finally got the, the uh, audio version. So that's what I was working on. So. Yeah, and that's all I have too. I need to get the hard copy. I would like to get it. But, uh, all those sheets are also online. Um, so it kind of helps you, you know, if you need something paper wise, um, some of these are, are online also. If you find anything, go ahead and will you post it in our group? I try, I looked last night and I posted everything in our Go Getter Book Club that I could find that was related um, or could be helpful. Um, so okay. check out that. Shelly, um, you're welcome. I'm glad that you've listened to it and you loved it. And Angelina says she's listened to it or read it three times. So anybody else want to mention anything? Yeah, check out our, um, our workplace group, um, Go Get Her Book Club, and you feel free to post anything that you find um, that relates to what we're talking about. Um, you know, contribute resources there or check out what we've posted so you can, you can get, you know, more. Um, you know, like there's, I put in there last night, like how to write a power note um, from the seven levels of communication, things like that. Um, Donna says she, she reads it and keeps it on her night table. Um, Jeff posted a link, sevenlevelsofcommunication.com. So, okay, cool. Anybody else? Want to mention anything? Well, great. I mean, it's 9.58 and I don't want to go over time. Uh, okay. I keep it under and keep us good. So we did good. I think we cut, we did, we did good. Um, we put, we talked about a lot. We don't want to, <clears throat> we don't want, you know, the, to talk too long about the same book. Cause we, I did that with success faster. We ended up just talking every week. We just kept talking about it and it dragged. So we're going to try to keep this to five sessions. So this is the first of five. Um, 9 a.m. Eastern time every Friday. Um, same link, same Zoom link. So save that link. Um, and um, I will post the recording of this later. So people who weren't here could watch it and hopefully join us next time. And, you know, when we're on these masterminds, feel free to hop in, talk to us, chat with us, you know, unmute yourself and bring up a point, anything. This is a mastermind discussion. Yeah. And we don't have to get through every slide. We don't have to get through all the material. That's not the goal. The goal is that we're building these ideas together and getting them in our brains. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Yes. And have a great rest of your day. Okay. And post in our group. Do it yes. now. <laughs> thank you. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Yeah. <laughs>